Today on Zeno Deladon, I'll be spending most of my day working on this PD8 DT4014, which is a 14 watt laser built by OP Team. I'd say overall quality is a 5 out of 10. There's some cost savings that they've done on this laser that I'll point out later on in the video. Uh, but the main problem is, is that there's a bunch of red laser diodes in this unit that need to be exchanged for new ones and the alignment is off so i'll be redoing the entire alignment inside of this laser head anyway as you can see the whole laser is open right now so we can go ahead and take the cover off the laser head right here and once again when you're working with lasers like this remove the cover off straight up and as vertical as possible to prevent hitting any of the optics on the inside of the laser head let's go ahead and do that uh with this power supply in the way Thanks, OPT. All right, so here's the inside of the laser head. We have four green laser diodes right here, two blues right here. We have a 445 and a 465 nanometer uh, set of laser diodes, so two different blues to get a nice even blue out of there. I actually like the mix of the two laser diode colors with the blues ends up looking real good and then we have the six red laser diodes in this section so we've got a section of three here section of three over here we'll be pulling all of those out from the back after we remove the entire laser head from the uh, laser but let's go ahead and see how it looks now go ahead and uh turn it on uh test mode enable laser i will bring up the brightness a little bit All right, so let's go in and investigate what our problem is. Go grab a little dip tester. That'll work. And we'll uh, go inside of the laser head, flying camera action away. All right, so uh, you'll see there are six red uh, laser diodes. Only one of them is working right now. So I'll go ahead and use this little dipper, and we can see that these are all really rough and uh, we got one over here that's working correctly which is the one on the uh, right side here so yeah those laser diodes are done here's what the uh, output looks like oh you can't see the other colors thank you shutter roll uh, well you can see that there's a lot of green and a lot of blue but not a lot of red so that needs to be changed. We'll go ahead and fix that up, oh, no problem. Back to the laser. Docking. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I shut off the laser, and I'm gonna remove the laser head. Go ahead and do that. Disable, power down the unit. And then, take a look at what we have here. So there's four screws on this particular laser head to remove and then you can carefully come out. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain because usually a lot of uh, yeah, the uh, thermal paste uh, gives a good adhesion to the optical table here. So kind of need to rock it back and forth once it's uh, removed, the screws are taken out. And we gotta disconnect the laser head from the laser driver back here. Go ahead and do that first. All right, it's laser surgery time. I get to talk to my uh, doctor about our favorite scalpels. All right, and now that that's out, make sure that there's no zip ties. Go ahead and cut that. And now we get to remove the laser head. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the bottom of that laser head. That thermal paste is not something we wanna have on that while working on it. Uh, if you can get the optics dirty, go ahead and clean off my hands like a proper surgeon. We'll come back to this. 
Now that we have the laser head removed out of the uh, laser completely, we can go ahead and start removing the red laser diodes, which are these three and these three. I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove this uh, desiccant packet, so that way I have more access with the solder sucker. Get that removed. This is the uh, first time uh, trying this solder sucker, so we get to see how well it works. Do you get to keep your job? <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's super nice. Well done, Hackle. All right, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and remove those laser diodes now. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we note the orientation that they're in when we pull them out. Uh, and on uh, this particular laser, they go in all the same way. So, and they usually do. So, I'll put them in the same way. It should be fine. All right, I'm going to point out one of the uh, cost-saving measurements they've done. Here we go. So they go in that way. Focus. What's the problem? Oh, right here. Right here. Good. All right, so this is an open can laser diode, which means that you can see the uh, laser die on the inside, and this has a fact lens as well on the front. Go ahead and grab a magnifying lens and show you that real quick. All right, so I uh, don't know if you can see it on the top there. Boy, I have the caffeine jitters right now. Uh, but there's a little... Uh, cylindrical lens on the front of that laser diode and what that does is it uh, corrects the output it's fast axis correction and uh, you'll see that on some laser diode descriptions where it says a uh, fac lens that's what a fac lens is so these have that cylindrical lens on the front of the die they help with the uh, output formation and correction of the beam the uh, problem is is that these are all also open can which means that they are exposed to the elements somewhat and uh, they can get damaged pretty easy uh, things like uh, dust or uh, moisture can get on the actual dye itself and damage it but there's no bueno Now, you think we'd be ready to put in new laser diodes, but nope, not there yet. And the biggest reason is that the closed can uh, laser diodes that we have, the can laser diodes, uh, the can is actually too wide to fit in there. So the next step is I'm gonna have to ream out these holes a little larger, about uh, four millimeters right now. And I'm gonna make them a little wider, about 4.5 millimeters, so that way we can actually install the new laser diodes. It's time to ream this laser a new one. So, in order to do that, I use this uh, 4.5 millimeter reamer, and I am going to use this plastic uh, tubing that's from a pen, and it's going to slide over like that, and that's going to prevent the ream from going too far forward 
and hitting any of the optics. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, we want to make sure that all of that metal is out of the laser. That way we don't have any short circuits or anything else. And uh, just to make sure I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow this section up with the air compressor and uh, come back and install this new laser diodes. Now that the old laser diodes have been removed and the holes have been widened, we can put in the uh, closed can equivalent, canned equivalent to those laser diodes. And the difference is, is that these have a little uh, metal uh, canister on the top. So you can see it. And that protects the actual laser die on the inside from contamination like dust or moisture and these end up lasting a lot longer, a little bit more pricey, uh, but worth it in the end than their uh, open can laser dabs. Now these also have a flak lens on the inside. Uh, that's part of the reason why they're a little bit bigger than the cans on a normal laser dab. Can't really see the flak lens in there, but I'll take a picture of what these look like. That way you can see it. It's holding the lens up to the camera. Isn't quite the uh, most functional thing right now. Let's go ahead and uh, put that in. Oh, well, you need to take a look at the orientation, how it needs to be flipped this way. And carefully put that in. And orientation is important. They must be in the exact right orientation. So straight up and down like that is possible. And I'm going to go ahead and put one screw in there. And we can... Uh, rotate them into the exact alignment and then screw them down completely once they're uh, roughly in. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to spend some time and make sure that all of those laser diodes are uh, perfectly lined up correctly. So for example, uh, you'll see uh, this one over here, it's a little crooked, maybe, but I want to make sure that they're all uh, perfectly in the exact same alignment as they should be, and that's important because uh, this laser uses polarization optics. I'll get uh, into that later on in the video and how those work, but that's important. So, please note the orientation of your laser diodes when extracting them. I can't say that enough. At this point, the laser diodes are now mechanically installed and in the correct orientation. I also took the time to put the little uh, heat shrink tubing around the laser pins so that way they don't short out against the case. And I've also put these little plastic uh, spacer in there. So all I have to do is put these boards on and re-solder them back into place. Go ahead and do that. All right, let's uh, check over all the work and then connect it to the laser. So how does that all look? Looks good.
Oh, I see. Time to try it. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect this up to the laser driver. We'll take a look at it. At this point, the laser head is now electrically connected to the laser, and we can go turn it on. See if we get six good working lasers for the reds or not. Test mode. Enabling the laser. Uh-huh. Looks like we're good. Uh, go ahead and see. Oh, yeah. You got three nice beams there. Three nice beams there. Oh, it looks good. I'm uh, gonna have to do some alignment and uh, I'm gonna have to turn that off before it burns a hole in the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's time to get into the realignment process on this laser and the first thing I have to do is remove a majority of the optics on the inside of the laser head. And this will include these three mirrors right here. Uh, those are the knife edging mirrors for this red section. Uh, these two mirrors right here, which are knife edging mirrors for this red section right here. You got this little mirror, and what that does is it takes the output from that blue, it brings it this way over, and it reflects off this sphere and out on this optic here. I'll be removing these three mirrors right here, which are the knife edging mirrors for these green laser diodes up here. The other optics I'll be removing is this green decroic filter, and that takes the green output and reflects it out th this way the blue decroc filter and that takes the blue lasers that come out this way reflects it out that way combines it with the green and the red and this optic right here which is kind of a dual purpose optic it's not quite a decroc filter what it is is it's an optic that allows light polarized in a particular way uh, in this case I believe it's uh, this way yes horizontally polarized it lets that light go through this way However, if the light is vertically polarized up and down like that, the light will actually reflect off and then go this way. Even though it's the same color of light, the polarization is very important. You've got an optic right here behind it, and that is a quarter wave rotating plate. And what that does is it changes the polarization from horizontal, in this case, to vertical. So that way, the laser light doesn't end up going right through the optic, but instead it bounces off. So this bank of red goes straight through that optic, that bank of red ends up bouncing off that optic, and they combine into one beam. And the catch is, is you can only do this once, which is why they have the knife edge mirrors. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the optics. I've got a couple of tools. Uh, i got these, which I made from the... Uh, rails that the CD-ROM optical sled uh, rides on. These are very stiff steel and they work very well. I made many tools with them. Uh, scalpel to take off glue on the uh, table. Wrenches and more and stuff for Allen screws. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I've also got a piece of paper here uh, with the assignment of the optics so that way I don't lose track of what optic goes where. And that's also a very helpful thing to do. Uh, this is a pretty quick process. Now let's go ahead and do that. So just a tip, uh, when you're dealing with this glue and you don't want to get it stuck on the surface, uh, a quick motion usually ends up breaking it pretty clean the first time. You don't have to worry about trying to get it off the table. All right, so that's all the optics I want to pull out of the laser head. I want to point out something. So if we take a look at the laser, uh, we can see that each of the laser diodes has three lenses. So uh, there's a row of uh, lenses here in the back, two more lenses here, and that's what they use for collimation. Now, uh, there's a couple of downsides to this. 
Uh, the upside is that they do the correction of the beam and they do the column ending of the beam at the same time. However, the downside of this is that if you're doing maintenance on one of these lasers and you need to recolumnate the laser diodes, uh, if you're using a slightly different diode or a newer version of a diode, uh, recolumnating those beams can be rather difficult. Uh, the reason why I think they use those cylindrical lenses is because it's cheaper to make a cylindrical lens and not have to worry about doing uh, the threading inside of the uh, laser housing for the collimating lens carriers. So that's my thought on it, which is, uh, you know, it's a cheaper way of doing things, but uh, I guess it works um, okay enough. Usually uh, on higher end lasers, you'll see uh, proper collimating lenses inside of lens carriers, and then you'll also see the beam correction done with something like anamorphic prisms, which is a little bit more efficient. Um, and a little bit more uh, optimal instead of using uh, the beam correcting lenses like this. But yeah, that's one uh, expense saving measure they've taken. Let's take a look at these optics right here. Uh, yeah, those. Okay, so if you'll notice, uh, these are all actually pretty much the same. Their placement on the uh, rotating mount for doing the up and down adjustment is a little different, but they're all little first surface mirrors. And a lot of the laser companies that are higher end, they don't use uh, silver mirrored like that. What they end up using is dichroic or dielectric coated uh, mirrors, kind of like the uh, dichroic mixers are. And those are a little bit more tolerant to things like heat, and they're a little bit more efficient as far as reflecting off the amount of light that hits them. So that's another cost saving measure they did on their lasers. Instead of using those uh, dichroic or dielectric little uh, triangular mirrors, they just use the same first surface mirror. So, yeah, interesting. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, pulling all these apart, and then I'm going to remove the glue from each one of these mounts, and then we're going to put them back in the laser head and do the alignment. On to the monotonous portion of the job for me and a quick sped up video portion for you. So at this point, I'm ready to remove the glue from the optical mounts. And to do that, I'm going to use a hot air uh, rework thing like that. And what we found out is that when we heat up the metal, the glue epoxy practically just breaks off uh, effortlessly. So it's a good way to do it. And that is also part of the reason why I do a quick break here. I keep the epoxy glue on the mounts because it's far easier to get off the mounts with heat here because you can't heat this base uh, optical table piece up. It's just a larger piece, and has much larger uh, thermal mass. So yeah, uh, anyway, uh, let's get started with that. All right, so that task has now been done. Got to clean up the work surface a little bit, and then I'll get into installing the optical mounts inside of the laser head and do my near field rough alignment. After that, the last step, which is the far field alignment, a little bit of cleaning, and uh, close it on up. Now that all the glue is removed from the optical mounts and on the inside of the optical table where the mounts go inside of the laser head. I can now start installing those mounts back in the laser uh, and doing the near field alignment. The near field alignment will be an alignment that's done 
close by. So that is the alignment of all the optics in the inside of the laser head, as well as say a few feet away from the laser. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, against the wall as I'm doing the alignment. But let's start with the red. And uh, you can see how I set that all up in the laser. And then when I do the greens, uh, we'll see what the alignment process looks like on the walls. So let's go ahead and start installing our mirrors. Let's start with this one. Move that over. So I'm going to tighten it down a little bit like that. And then I am going to get out one of my little tools. And I'm going to use that tool to hold that in place. Well, I just tighten up that outside screw. So that way everything is uh, in a state where I can then carefully position it and set the alignment. I don't want it to freely rock around though. So do that. All right, and then I'm going to go back and actually loosen the screw here. The reason why I tighten that down is so I can tighten this top screw down without this bracket moving. So back off on that just a little bit. And now I'm going to turn on the laser. And I have just the red laser diodes running right now. I turn the green and the blue off so that way I don't have to deal with them in the beam right now. I can work on one color at a time. All right, so our goal is to get that one beam that we have bouncing off that uh, optic now out um, properly. And this gets a little tricky. I discussed this a little bit more in some of my videos, but it's gonna be a quite busy day, so I kinda wanna just jump to it and explain it as I go. Uh, to kind of help with showing you, what I am gonna do is actually install uh, the decroic mirror for the green that way we have another reference we can take a look at the inside of the laser and go, hey, look, that's where our beam is going. All right. uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Like I said we're just using it as a reference so we can take a look at uh, some of the light as it travels through the laser. On. All right, so we can see that our output is actually hitting right here. So that means that the laser light coming from this uh, laser is hitting that mirror. It's bouncing this way, so we need to move the optic this way. And it looks like we need to move the optic down a little bit. So let's go ahead and roughly set that real quick. Using tools. First, I want to move that over. So that looks good. As you can see now, it's hitting over by the uh, galvo area right here. I want to go ahead and tighten that down a little bit. And then I'll do the up and down. One thing to note is that uh, when you're doing the alignment inside of the laser and you have the uh, laser head in the laser, and you're bouncing that output off the uh, two galvo mirrors over here, uh, your motion is going to be uh, translated 90 degrees. So for example, uh, if you're looking for an up and down motion or making up and down adjustments, it'll actually go uh, side to side. Um, and then your adjustments on the horizontal will actually go up and down. And that's due to the geometry of the reflections off the galvo mirror. So note that later on as well as I'm doing these adjustments. Bring that down. Set that right there on the front of the uh, galvo mirror. And then I'm going to 
rotate that so it's uh, hitting the top front edge of the Y mirror of the uh, top mirror so other way all right so that is in position now let's see how it looks overall remove this so that's in a better position too No, let's uh, make some sense out of this beam path real quick. So you can understand what's going on. Uh, you'll notice that uh, these screws in here um, are staggered. So this one is closer to these lenses. This one's a little further out uh, towards the outside of the laser head. This one is the most furthest out. Uh, you'll see a similar arrangement right here. So uh, this one is the uh, furthest out. No, uh, the closest, this one in the middle, this one is furthest out this way. Uh, and they're staggered for a reason. So, if you were to think about the beam path, once it's uh, reflected off at 90 degrees, this one is going to be the beam that's closest to this side. The middle is going to be in the middle, and then this one right here is going to be the furthest out. So you're going to have three beams that are going like this. Now if we take a look at this optic right here, uh, the red one, uh, we can see just a little bit of the red reflect off the optic right here. You'll notice that it's on uh, the outside that's closest to this area right here, which indicates that it's on the correct side. And eventually we'll see three individual dots on this dichroic filter. And we can come over here and I'll show you a problem I've kind of noticed with some of these uh, lasers. And uh, let's see if we can clean that up by adjusting the optic in the back, pulling it out. But you can see that there's not much room on the right side of the mirror. So maybe by pulling that knife edge uh, mirror out just a little bit, we can get that more towards uh, the the uh, right side. Now let's go ahead and try and do that real quick. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out like this and what that will kind of do is if you would imagine this is a pivot point our beam is uh, going uh, this way and it's hitting this and doing kind of like this so by pulling this out and treating this as a fulcrum what we end up doing effectively is this which will bring the beam more uh, towards this way uh, on this uh, mirror right here so I'm going to go ahead and do that. My apologies, the uh, fingers hit a button. Uh, but anyway, uh, we didn't really free up uh, all that much room, so we may need to move that optic uh, more towards the right in order to get more room on the mirror, but uh, we may be able to make that work. Well, let's see if we can do that. Eventually we'll see three dots, two more coming off to the uh, left of that mirror, or left of that dot on that mirror. So, could be a little bit of a tight fit with this one. But uh, the tolerances weren't of my choosing. All right, so my next goal is to put the optics in after that for the other two red lasers. And those lasers will be right next to that beam. So go ahead and do that.
All right, so now what I want to do is I want to find a point where this optic is slitting uh, towards the collimating lenses, but it's not hitting the beam coming off this uh, mirror right here. So they're going to be uh, real close together like this, the beam. So you imagine our beams, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to go and I'm going to try and reflect the laser beam off the side that is closest this way because that is going to uh, make sure that we're not wasting any of the laser beam uh, by unused mirror section on this mirror. So I'll show you what that looks like after I make that adjustment. Alright, and now we can manipulate the mirrors as needed to put that beam next to the beam that we already have on uh, this side. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate that around right there, just like that. Drop the tool and see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so let me show you what I have now. Okay, there are two beams. You can't really see them on my finger because the camera uh, sees it as a bright light. But let's see if we can uh, take a look at the two dots on the optics. No, oh, I can't really see it on that one. But we can clearly see those two beams right there. So now I gotta figure out a way to squeeze a third beam right next to those two and you can see I am quickly running out of room. So it'll be a little bit of a, a tight fit, but uh, that's okay. I'm a professional, so it'll look snazzy after I get done with it. Alright, moving on to the last uh, optic in that portion. With those three red uh, knife edge mirrors set, now we can take a look at what we have. You'll, you take a look at that optic, you'll uh, see kind of three dots. Lock this out. Eh, lots of reflection there. Let's take a look over here. You can see what I mean, uh, that optic needs to be moved. And we can take a look at the galbos. There should be three visible dots on there, as you can see. And more importantly, now if we go to the wall, we take a look at our our output. All right. Oh, shutter rolls making this difficult. Uh, we have three lines. Uh, so that's our three beams. So now we got to do that with the uh, other section of red, and then bring those together. And I'll do that off camera and we'll come back to the greens. About finishing up the red off camera, uh, apparently I lied because here I am. So I wanted to point out something and I pointed it out in previous videos before that I've done. But I'll use this translucent plastic material and I get this material from uh, LCD panels and stuff like that. They're the diffusers. So I can block beams that I don't want. Uh, using this material and the reason why I use this specific material is that uh, there's nothing to absorb the laser energy it uh, scatters it so it makes it much safer to work in here allows me to see the beams a bit better and because there's uh, no heat being generated by the laser beam it's not a dark material 
I don't have to worry about that catching fire or burning or uh, causing any kind of smoke contaminating uh, on the lenses and on the mirrors. So it's a great material to use. I'm at the point where I'm now doing uh, these three lasers right here. And there is one laser on the far uh, left side. And that laser actually ends up going through all the way. Uh, and then it hits the uh, red polarizing combiner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use more of those little slips. And uh, I'm going to block off the one I don't want to make the adjustments. So I just have two out of the three beams again. Uh, I dropped that. Uh, quick, get the forceps. Doctor, what are you doing? All right, on a block, the uh, the center one, because uh, that is actually uh, not the center of the beams. And now what I want to do is. Uh, actually, I should probably find the one stationary beam. I'm going to slide in another one right there. Yeah, that'll work. Alright, so I'm blocking those two beams, and the only beam that I have on uh, this red that's coming through is that one that comes directly through and onto this optic right here. So I'm going to find that beam, and I'm going to use uh, this to place it where I uh, need it to be on uh, this mirror right over here now you can't see it zoom out yeah so i'm gonna position this optic so i see that one beam on here where it needs to be and it uh, doesn't have to be perfect because i can make my final adjustments to how those sets of three line up um, after I do the knife edge alignment of those. I just need to see them clear enough to line them up right now. So, let's see. Alright, so that's on the mirror. And that is, let me think about this. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that's the one that needs to be furthest on this side. So, go place it on that side. Right there. So it should be in the same position uh, as the other one, which is to the right and to the front of the Y uh, galbo mirror. So you can see over here that it's more to the uh, right side on the optic. And it's more towards the top of the Y mirror, or more towards the front and top. No. So, time to put the rest of the dots next to that real quick one by one starting with the one that's not in the middle it's actually the one uh, furthest this way that ends up being in the middle because of uh, their optical arrangement uh, where's my other uh, plastic slip maybe I got both shake the laser up and down later to make sure all the tools are out of it at this point. I'm just kidding. We shake the lasers to make sure the alignment's good. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so go ahead and do the same thing. Tighten up that optic. Like that, we're trying to set it on uh, this mirror uh, right here. That's uh, gonna bounce off that mirror and out this way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. Oh, there it is. The heck? And then the vertical adjustment. And we're going to put that dot to the left of the dot that we have originally. And this will be in the middle of the Y mirror. 
on the galvo. So now we take a look at what we have. We have two dots on that mirror, and a little bit of reflection from something something else. Take a look at the uh, Galvo mirror. See two dots there, and uh, oh, that's working. Uh, anyway, uh, it's supposed to be uh, two vertical lines. Uh, Go ahead and uh, play around with that, but you get the point at this moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll line up the sixth and last red, and then we'll get on the green. All right, now that those are lined up, and take a look at what we have. So, three uh, dots on the mirror. Go over to the galvo. Wonderful. Can't see diddly. Uh, okay, I see. They're drifting a little bit. That's okay. Uh, they'll have to be nudged back. But more on that later. And more importantly, we have, once again, uh, three distinct lines, which is what we should be seeing. And uh, the beams shouldn't actually join together. They should still be separated by a little bit of a margin. Because uh, if you join together, together the beams uh, close by, they actually end up crossing one another and looking terrible. So I changed the uh, shutter of the camera so that way you can see the full output. And what I want to do is I want to line up the one green that uh, doesn't use a knife edging mirror uh, to match what we have here. So let's take a look at the optics on here. You'll see that uh, this laser right here uh, comes directly through here. It ends up going to the uh, right of this mirror uh, and then coming off and hitting here. Uh, and then the rest of them come this way, hit that mirror, and bounce off. So because it's skimming this mirror, um, it's going to hit, let me think about this for a second, uh, this section, which means that it's going to be the uh, dot is going to end up being on this side versus being on this side of that optic. So, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the uh, green uh, mixing dichro and line it up so that way that's in the same position as the, uh, the red dot. And I want that to be on the position of the right side of that red dot. So, yep. Yeah that. Now you'll also notice too that a lot of these mouse they go in and out like this. Uh, if you have it uh, out like this um, what's going to end up happening is it's going to move the entire uh, laser beam uh, let's see yeah, this way and if you move it this way it's going to move all the laser beams this way so if I move it back and forth you can't really uh, really see it but you, you get what I mean it's doing one of these, like a ramp, so down and up. If that makes sense. Uh, anyway, that does help, and that's why that little cutout is there, so you can make that adjustment and line everything up. And I want it to be all nice and pretty, so we're going to try our best with that. Be quiet, AC. Go ahead and move that over. Should be 
on the the front and it should line up so up and down bring it closer like that and perfect now let's see how that works Man, I hate touch screens. They make uh, things all so much fun. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. Unfortunately, you can't see it due to the uh, shutter settings all too much. It just looks yellow. That's helpful. But uh, yeah, it looks good. And uh, that's where it needs to be on there. You know, I'm just I'm going back, going back to analog technology start recording my stuff on VHS particulars VCRs and camcorders don't have buttons you can accidentally hit with zero tactile force normalized clicky buttons all right let's sit in the other green optics All right, so, yeah, you can't see it because, uh, settings, uh, but, uh, they, uh, they look to, uh, line up over there, but, uh, if you take a look at how they look on the mirror, I should point out something, get that out of here, uh, you can see that the greens are uh, pretty far apart, or maybe you can't, focus, all right, so yeah, they're really far apart, and the reason for that is because uh, the optic that I just put in, uh, this one right here, is uh, too far out towards me. It needs to go forward more. That you can take a look at the dot on uh, this mirror right here, and you can see just how much it can be moved closer to the back end of that mirror, and the term knife edging. So we're um. Gonna make that adjustment and uh, correct that. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to pro mode. All right, back in pro mode. Now we can continue on to where we were, which is uh, moving this optic more forward to get the uh, right alignment. Let's see where that lands. Move it that way. All right, and it's right where it needs to be, it looks like, which is directly to the left of the beam that we had on there right now. Let's see if I can turn that down. That's all the way down. It's not helpful. Why is digital stuff so limiting? Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. So you can see that those green beams are uh, closer together now. And if you look on the wall, uh, we get two beams that are uh, close to one another. Of course, you can't see that. Turn that down. See, this is why we can't have nice things. Ah, stuck between a shutter and a uh, laser galvo. Enough bantering. Uh, time to put the rest of these mirrors in. Get the job finished. Is it after 14 or more of these lasers? Uh, the job gets pretty. Uh, how do you say? Monotonous? I can say those things. What am I going to do? Fire myself. <laughs> Monotonous lasers. I've had to work out far worse. So while I'm doing this, uh, I'll, I'll actually do some bantering. So I want to point out that these are brass mounts on an aluminum optical table, an aluminum base plate. 
And that's actually part of the problem with these lasers. Something that uh, we noticed with the higher end lasers versus the lower end lasers, and that is that the uh, higher end lasers, they use the same material for their mounts as they do uh, the base plate material. And that is for a really good reason, or at least that's what we believe. And that reason is that so all the materials have the same uh, temperature coefficient uh, or thermal expansion coefficient. That just means how much the material uh, expands and contracts as uh, it's warming up and cooling down. And uh, when you have two different materials, the problem is, is that one material expands more than the uh, other material. Uh, hence things like bimetallic you know, strips and stuff that bend when they get heated. Well, that kind of happens here, but uh, what, what happens is, is that uh, the brass and the aluminum, they kind of expand on top of one another like this. So one of them gets bigger more, and that can cause some torquing on the screws. Now, when you have uh, torquing on the screws like that, because the screws want to rotate a particular way, you can actually make the screws creep a little bit and using uh, the same materials can prevent that creeping. Now that's part of the problem why these things come from the factory out of alignment because uh, if you're going to do these you really do need to set the alignment wait a good day or two and come back and make sure that alignment is good and if you do that you don't even need the glue because you're not trying to ensure that uh, the torque they're going to give you problems later if you've already let all the material stress out and it does help to you know cycle the laser on and off to during the uh, settling process before the final alignment because uh, that'll that'll just let the materials uh, do their thing and find a nice happy uh, comfortable spot of which they like to be in look at that one more green optic Honestly, uh, these little adjustments can take absolute hours to do and get right. It's not easy stuff. Not easy. Looks easy, maybe, right now, because somebody else is doing it. But trust the person who's doing it. Uh, it takes a while to pick up. It's definitely a uh, unique skill. That is just about perfect. It looks nice and yellow and even. And I put my hand on top of the gavels. Barely any light leaks off. So that's looking real good. Let's do the blue real quick. Okay, so uh, you can't really see it, but we have uh, two blues because of uh, the Wonderwall camera roll. Uh, let's see if I can find an area where it is. Okay, yeah, so you see in that P right there, there's two blues. So we're going to have to figure out which one of those is the uh, one that needs to be moved and the uh, one that just goes right through. Of course, you can't really see what's going on. Oh, now you can. Perfect. Don't move. Stay. Alright, so, uh, that's the uh, near-field computer. I'm going to just 
pop back to the uh, other mode and see if I get a better picture. All right, so I tried uh, changing test patterns, and well, you know, that's about the best we're gonna get. But uh, the alignment uh, looks pretty good. So the next thing to do at this point is to do the far field alignment, and that's to make sure that everything looks good from a distance. So I power off the laser and uh, change locations. All right, now I'm on the last bit of doing the laser alignment, and that is the far field alignment, uh, which is really simple to do. Uh, at this point, you should have a pretty close uh, alignment already. Uh, you look out there, see it uh, looks pretty good, but uh, we take a look through the uh, telescope here. We can see that there is some things to work on. So let's see, the green needs some work. You can see that it's separating up and down out there. And those aren't in full alignment yet either. The red looks pretty okay. Blue looks pretty okay. But yeah, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be looking through here and just making a little uh, adjustment to the optics on the inside of the head to make sure the beams out there look as good as they can. We'll take a look at what that looks like after I'm done. But uh, it's pretty quick going, pretty easy once you get to this point. So let's see what we get. All right, the far field alignment is for the most part finished. Of course, we're gonna have to let this sit for a little while and uh, see how the optics walk, but that will be just a repeat of what I did, making sure that everything looks good in the distance. Uh, so yeah, uh, one more adjustment needs to be done and that is to take this optic and make it so the beam is down a little bit more. As you can see, it's going over the top of the uh, axe galvo just a little bit. So that needs to be nudged. Otherwise, it looks decent. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like uh, out in the far field. Oh, laser beam. All right, so that's pretty good and together. And uh, blue looks good. Green looks good. Nice yellow there. Red looks pretty decent. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it looks pretty good. Not bad at all. At this point, it looks like I'm pretty much done with this laser, so let's do a quick uh, wattage reading on it. So, I have a laser power meter here, uh, test the optical output in uh, wattage, get the readout here. And we're going to turn up the laser, see what we get. Uh, it should be a 14 watt laser, and we're probably going to lose about half a watt in optical losses, and the modulation is not always at 5 volts, it's usually at uh, like 4.95. So. And uh, it's going to be just shy, but you're at least 12 watts right now. So what we should be getting. Let's see what we get. Yeah, about 12 watts, just as I would expect it. That's not bad at all. It's a nice white, too. Uh, let's also real quickly uh, play pros and cons with this laser, give you some more of my opinions on uh, OPT's construction, what I've found, what I think. So uh, in general, overall, uh, OPT is not a bad laser brand. They have a good construction uh, methodology. They do know what they want in their laser as far as design. They uh, use pretty good galvos, the uh, DT40 not bad the only problem is is on some of the galvos uh, the Y galvo is pushed over too far this way um, and then you don't really get the full width of your output which you know they might do deliberately just to make sure you don't go crazy scanning with your X but worse things uh, worse things can happen it's just a little hard on the X galvo can't burn them out uh, let's see what else uh, the laser assembly and the optical mounts uh, aside from the collimating lens setup that I don't like too much, uh, the mounts are pretty okay. 
I don't have uh, any complaints. The only difference uh, I would say as far as improvements is to change this to maybe a brass or just make aluminum mounts. Uh, that way you don't get the uh, thermal expansion coefficient uh, differences and having those walk as much. Let's see. Um, the glue they use in here, it's a good glue. Uh, I just would suggest that they put it on after they let the laser uh, sit and then do another adjustment. Because what I think is happening is that they set the laser, they put the glue on, and as the glue is curing, the optics walk a little bit. But I think they'd be okay if they set it, wait, set it again, then glue it. Um, overall, you don't need to glue the optics down, the mounts down, because uh, you know in higher end lasers they don't anyway, and they seem to be okay, which is surprising. So something we're kind of testing out to see whether or not that is crucial. On the upside is uh, not gluing the mounts down does give us uh, an upside, and that is if this comes back in for repair, uh, the time it's going to take to repair the laser is going to be significantly reduced. So that's always good. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, pros. This is a good power supply, uh, honestly. Don't have any problems with it. And uh, it's also one that's uh, potted. And it's not repairable, but uh, there's no failures that we've seen with these power supplies so far. They seem pretty good, and they seem pretty uh, resistant to uh, moisture. Uh, the only downside is they put the power supplies right on top of the laser head. And that makes working with the alignment an absolute pain in the bottom because you can't get the long screws in through here and sometimes they uh, don't even have enough slack on the uh, thermistor cable down here to move it and you gotta disconnect it so it could be better a laser driver in of itself and it seems to have okay linearity that's not really a problem uh, we have a little, had a little hiccup with one of them and uh, that's uh, concerning but overall that's not bad uh, let's see. Oh, there's another problem. Yeah, you see what's missing here? If you don't see what's missing here, you, sir, uh, own non variance equipment. Because there should be a shutter here. And there's no shutter. Uh, you know, that kind of beam block. Fail on fail, you know. That's kind of important. So, maybe install that next time. You send one of these to uh, the great land of America. Because uh, that's how the FDA likes it. Speaking of other things that are questionable, of course, uh, I say questionable because the hardware actually does support it. It does have safety interlocks and stuff in the back. So, for example, there's this one, and there's the uh, key switch. You notice the key switch is not uh, in, and that's because it's not uh, connected, and it's just jumpered on the inside. Uh, in fact, it's uh, that jumper right down there, I think. So, yeah, I don't like that. But, uh, as I said, the hardware supports it. Uh, really, it, the only thing that it, it seems to be missing is uh, is a shutter and maybe uh, a scan fail uh, feedback off the Galvo driver. I don't think there's one on uh, on these. Let's see. Nope. Nope, I don't see one. Well, yeah, so no scan fail. This laser could be built a little bit better. You know, it's, it's not bad, but uh, they need to eat some of the peas they left on the plate, if uh, you understand what I mean. But not bad. As I said, give it a, a 5 out of 10. Not an absolute disaster, like the uh, Art Fox laser that I worked on, or Schnipp, or Landling, you know. But it's not as good as Light Space, not as good as Kavant, not as good as uh, RGB laser systems. But uh, it'll get you through a night or three. Anyway, I think that's uh, pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, stay tuned for more.